we go from this to this. Yes, yes, yeah, Sahel is here. Today we have our fourth Dimash reaction. This is Ave Maria. I've received this request a lot of times and quite a lot of those recommended I check out the new wave 2021 performance. As with my other reactions, I went to check out the lyrics beforehand in case it's in a different language or there's anything different to the traditional Ave Maria text. And this is what I found. So maybe this is a bit of a spoiler, but we'll see. Schubert's Ave Maria is probably the most famous one. And I also really like Caccini's version, which is often performed by countertenors. In a comment in one of my other videos, I saw someone say that Dimash's Ave Maria is quite similar to the Caccini version, so I'm interested to see in what regard that is. Just a quick note to say that there is a lot of debate around the Caccini version and who actually wrote it. Was it Caccini or was it Vavilov? But that's not for this video. Okay, let's get straight into it. It's a nice soundscape. Just quickly want to say, very interesting suit, white and black, very contrasting, you know, the complete opposites, white, often symbolic of angels, and black, the opposite of darkness and sorrow. It's a very pensive opening. My heart rate is definitely increased with Tension. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's definitely things to talk about there, so I'll go back over them. Well, I've heard Dimesh before and I've seen his range, so it's just hit me that I'll never again have that initial shock of hearing him for the first time. But that's fine, because now I can really focus on other elements of the music. So, what do we have? We have a very, very nice countertenor performance. When he starts singing, it's very, very exposed. It's just his voice. And there's reverb as well, so we can hear his notes after he stops singing them. I wonder if this was planned or taken into consideration when Igor wrote this and envisioned Dimash's performance of it. Because here, for example, you can hear that previous note. So he sings, and you can hear both the notes. So he's making a chord with himself. See those two notes there? I like how Dimash can just change into this airy voice, such as here. So airy, which I think just makes it seem so ethereal and floaty. And then of course we see 
Igor accompanying on the piano, which I think is very cool. Okay, I'm now going to point out some similarities that I've seen with the Caccini or Vavilov version of Ave Maria, and I'm going to sing on top of Dimash. So if you don't want to see that, please go to the timestamp that I've put just here. So this section, the structure of the harmonic progression is the same as the Caccini the Vilov version, which means that you can take the melody from the other version and put it on top of this and it will fit perfectly. Now I'm going to try and demonstrate that by singing quietly on top of Dimash. It's very high so do forgive me. If you don't know the other version, the Caccini of the Vavilov version, then I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check it out to see where that melody comes from. So based on this, I now understand why that comment in my other video said that this version was similar to the other version. So I'm thinking it can't be coincidence. So maybe this is Igor's arrangement of the Caccini of the Vavilov version. All right, so at this part here, We were in C major, which sounds like this. And we were expecting Dimash's entry to then come in on F minor, which sounds like this. But instead, we go from C major to A minor. So we go from this to this. This is what we call moving to the relative minor in music. And what this means, every major key in music, as we can see by the outside circle here, has a key signature, which is how many sharps or flats are played in the scale. The inside circle here shows the minor key that has the same key signature. So for example, C major where we were has no sharps and flats, and A minor is the minor key that also has no sharps and flats. So in that sense, the two keys are related. The relative minor is always a third below. So C, B, A. The relative minor of G is E, G, F, E, of D is B, D, C, B, etc. So whilst it sounds like an unexpected key change, there is actually quite a strong relation between the two keys there. Also at this point, we have the choir come in too. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really getting imagery of angels, you know, the clouds up above, quite transcendental imagery I'm getting in my head listening to this. Now on the stage, we do have dry ice and clouds behind him on the screen, but the choir adds in this feeling of voices coming from above. And the fact that there are no lyrics too, they're just singing ah, really adds to this. Just before the choir comes in, there's a little passage, Dimash goes, and on that bottom note, This is one of the rare cases so far in this performance where he's using a blended voice. It's like a mix between his chest full voice and his head voice or falsetto. Before this, he was choosing to use a very, very airy sound, like I mentioned earlier, especially at the start. But then at the key change, when the choir comes in, you can see it's a much fuller sound with his falsetto. Okay, let's continue. Just quickly, yeah, I can see that this is based on the Caccini or Fafilov version now. The whole structure is the same. Okay, I understand.
Blimey, that's a nice one, isn't it? I really like that. Obviously, he had to <laughs> go up there at the end, but I'll come back to that after. That's just a few points from that last section that I'd like to go over. So, there's another key change at this part. <laughs> So this time we are expecting to hear A minor, but we instead go back to C, which is the relative major of A minor. So there is some connection. But the important thing with relative majors and minors is that the outside circle, all the keys are major, which you can think of as more happy. This time when they go from A to C, instead of going from A minor to C major, they go from A minor to C minor which is now over here. This is a clever way to stay in the minor, so overall a bit more of a sad or sorrowful sound, whilst transitioning to a higher key. A higher key means Dimash's melody will be higher up, so he gets to sing higher and show off his range. We also have a beat coming. which adds intensity. Also contributing to this intensity is the instrumentation that we can hear in the back, particularly the strings. The strings are accenting the offbeats, which creates a kind of agitation. This is interesting because it's a complete contrast to the smooth flowing ah, of Dimash, you know, having a underneath it, they just contrast each other. Then here we have the highest note so far, which is a top B flat which is pretty much the highest note a chorister is expected to sing. Then we get this. Blimey, I mean, look at that. He's just so effortlessly chilling at the above soprano range. The top note that he hits there, the top F, but up the octave, that again is the highest note in the Queen of the Night aria. The highest note of that little section. And then his last note. He does it so quietly, with so much control and so much dynamic variation, he gets louder and then quieter again. That note there, the top C, that is typically the highest the soprano is expected to go. And the instrumental noises in the background? Yeah, I'm not really sure what instruments they are. They could be instruments that are traditional to certain cultures, but they give off an almost primal aura. It's quite mystical, I feel, at this point. I mean... Another stellar performance really by Dimash, isn't it? And this truly is a piece to showcase his falsetto and the ridiculousness of his high register. Let's leave that there. As always, thank you for watching. Would appreciate a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.